Okay, well this story starts uh, with me uh, finding a lot of vintage uh, computing equipment on Facebook Marketplace. These are some of the images uh, that were that were posted as a part of the lot. I've not seen uh, a few of these computers before, and one of them that I had really no idea what it was, I thought this might be some audio equipment, um, was this SWT PC6800 computer system. I thought it was, yeah, audio equipment. Um, so I, I looked it up after I'd bought the lot for about 100 bucks. Um, and I discovered that this was made in 1975, this computer, by SWTPC, which was Southwest Technology Products Corporation of San Antonio, Texas. So in 1975, uh, they released the 6800 computer system. Uh, this is an actual ad from Byte Magazine, one of the really early issues of Byte Magazine from 1976. So this, it, it contained a 6800 CPU, had 2K of RAM out of the box, you could expand it, um, and it cost $450. So it was actually one of the cheaper uh, home computers uh, that you could purchase at this time. The other ones were the Altair AT80 and the MSI AT80. So these kind of three computer systems were really your only options. And this was the only 6800 uh, based one. Um, so um, this is what it looks like. Um, it's kind of on my workbench. Um, now, when I when I got it, I did try powering it on, and uh, some bad things happened. Um, so um, I took all the cards out and uh, looked through um, all of the kind of technical manuals about the the computer. I've actually learned a lot about how this works and the process of um, you know trying to repair it. So let me give you a kind of look around. So on the left here, that's the motherboard. Uh, there's a 50 pin bus, and then at the top, there's another 30 pin bus, which actually does the IO. So the, the actual uh, CPU and memory boards go in the bottom half and the IO cards go in the top. Um, on the right hand side is the power supply in uh, that kind of enormous uh, capacitor. Um, there's not a huge amount of voltage going through that capacitor, it's about, just about 10 volts. Or, or, or so, uh, but still not good to touch. Um, the other thing um, uh, to notice is there's two transformers. Now there should only be one transformer, um, but my, uh, what I think happened was the bottom transformer, which is the original one, some of the windings must have failed. Um, it needs to provide minus 12, plus 12, and plus five volts. So I think what they did is they, they went and found a transformer uh, that could replace uh, the winding that failed, and then look, they've budged it into the case, and there's a kind of bit of cardboard in between, which is fantastic. Um, so I, I would like to see if I can find a transformer to replace this, but they're now actually really pretty rare uh, and hard to come by. Um, another kind of point of interest here is that this is a uh, rectifier board and there's some smoothing capacitors there and a fuse. Now when I first turned it on, this was the bit that went wrong. Uh, one of the um, diodes actually went red hot and one of, uh, uh, one of the capacitors um, actually just let go completely. Um, so um, all the electrolyte came out over the, the board. So I cleaned up the board. Um, I bought some uh, replacement components, which uh, are to spec uh, based on the original schematic um, and, and put them in. So um, um, this, this um, regulator is now working, rectifier and, and regulated, uh, that's the 12 volt line is now working really well. So um, this kind of, bus, this 50 pin, it's called a CC50 bus. It's really strong and th those are the cards that you plug into it. Make, they make a really good connection. At the top, this is the kind of IO area. I'm going to show you the, this is the serial control card which plugs into the number one slot up there and in between is this kind of decoding logic between the main bus and the IO bus so the cards know what address they're on. Um, uh, this is what the actual cards, the, the kind of main bus um, SS50 uh, boards look like. Uh, you'll see there, there's the CPU, um, there's, uh, that's the ROM, that's the RAM, um, and then there's a really big crystal there on the board, and there's also a, a chip that does lots of different baud frequencies that's right below it. So this, this, that, that is the, the kind of heart of the, the system. Below here, uh, below the CPU board, is one of the memory boards. So I think these are 8K boards. Um, and um, uh, uh, I had four of them in the original uh, system. Actually, the system was, was populated, it was nearly completely full of boards. So I have to go through each one of these boards, make sure they're working, uh, 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 working well. So one thing to point out is everything is socketed. Like somebody really cared for this system. So every, um, every integrated circuit is in a socket and the sockets are kind of unusual. I've never seen these before. They're like little metal pins. So um, uh, uh, they're not like the ones that you can get these days, um, but they work really well. Um, the, the ROM chip is actually also in a socket, uh, it has, but it's a different socket again. It just kind of has clips to hold it in. It's like a 
somewhat zero insertion force. CPU is also in a socket, which is kind of unusual. But you'll see every single one of the, uh, this, is, this is the memory board, they all have it. Um, so yeah, somebody really cared for it. Now, one of the things about the memory board is kind of interesting is how they know what address their memory starts at is this little bodge wire. So this is the zero, uh, this, this memory board starts at the zero address. Uh, and the one above, you'll see the bodge wire there starts at the, the, the next slot up. So I think this is eight, uh, 8K uh, uh, blocks, uh, four or 8K blocks, something like that. Uh, anyway, the, the, the system was uh, kind of fully populated with these boards uh, when I got it. As I said, this this seems to be in really good condition. You know, I've I've looked through both of these boards, um, uh, these memory boards and the CPU board, um, and it's still not working very well. So I thought I would try uh, this Deoxit D5. Uh, so watching Adrian's digital basement, he seems to repair a whole whole host of problems using Deoxit on these old circuit boards. So I've been uh, trying that because I'm not getting. Uh, it seems to power up. Most of the lines seem to be okay, and I've I. Uh, taking a logic probe to them um, but for for some reason I'm not getting uh, good signals out um, so it's somewhere between the CPU board and I think uh, that serial board that I'm just showing you there okay so this is the kind of output that I am getting from the 68,000 and I've been working on this for a while and I've I've looked at you know um, what's going on on the CPU board, what's going on on the, um, so this is an, uh, the MP-C, so this is the serial controller card. And uh, this is like the minimum setup. And I'm getting like kind of, I mean, frankly, garbage coming through the um, serial port. Now, I know the baud rate is right. And, um, it, what I think has been happening, and I, I spent a lot of time looking at the card itself and actually looking at, you know, what's going on on the serial card. I've got like the whole, the whole schematic, right? And one thing that, as I was looking at the schematic for the serial card, um, I was thinking about the points of failure. So for example, you know, not every line on this thing work uh, is important to what I'm doing to the, the serial card, but the, the one that I have kind of outlined in purple is. But I started to think about this. This is the clock divider section, and it goes in over here. But notice there's this kind of really interesting kind of. It goes to the end of the cassette wire, and it goes in, and this is a part of what generates the clock. And I started to wonder about this bit here and I put a, 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 a sorry I put a multimeter across um, these two points and I'm expecting something like a five volt uh, signal over this and I was getting at, you know almost nothing so anyway what is really surprising to me is I think this problem and we'll, we'll figure this out but I actually think this cable here, which, you know, 1970s cable, um, is a part of the problem. I, I think all of this kind of stuff over here is fine, but I was measuring the resistance between two lines, which should have, you know, it should be very low, and I can't find it. So anyway, I have a um, nice colorful cable here, and I'm going to see what happens if I just I want to replace this ribbon cable. I know it sounds crazy that the ribbon cable could be the cause of all of this kind of, all of these problems, but let's give it a go and see what, see what happens. Okay, so I've got the, um, the new cable soldered together. Um, connected there through to my serial connection. Um, so everything uh, seems to be working. I'm using a um, Python program called, um, it, it's part of the PySerial library, it's called Miniterm. And what's kind of cool about it is um, I get I get sort of most of the kind of junk characters. So there's the star, which is um, the MCBUG prompt on the SWT PC6800. And let's do uh, memory, uh, what, uh, E, Zero, zero, zero. So this will print out the um, stuff that's at that memory location. And if I keep hitting return, 
there you go it's just reading out the different memory locations and I can do uh, what? I think P is a command there you go so this um, just prints out um, uh, if you were saving to tape or saving to punch card so P um, this is the this is what would be sent to the, the tape printer so um, and I think that's working pretty well. It's it's now reliable. So it's taken a bit of time to figure out, but this um, SWT PC6800 is now fully working. So thanks for watching. Please leave a comment below. And uh, if you like this kind of content, uh, please subscribe.